Do you know prophets in the Old Testament prayed as well? I don't, yeah, the Jew. Because don't forget, Christ was a Jew. He came um, amongst the Jews. So it was a common practice of the Jews that, that they used to pray three times a day, bowing and prostrating to God, exactly like we do. They bow first and then kneel in prostration. It's mentioned in, ne in um, uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4 and 6. This is how they prayed. They bowed first, kneel in prostration. Before we offer our prayer, we do a little mini wash. We wash our hands, finish by washing our feet before we enter congregational prayers and we worship God alone. That's right, yeah. So, it is, uh, so this is something that they did in the Old Testament, in Moses' time. It says in Deuteronomy that he washed his hands and finished by washing his feet before he offered congregational prayers. So what Islam claims to be is it's always been God's religion. What is Islam means submission to the will of God. So for example, we will say Abraham, for example, the father of all the nations, he was a Muslim because he submitted his will to God. At that time, there was no Christianity, there was no Judaism. So Islam has always been the, uh, the religion of God and is completed and perfected in the Quran, which is the final revelation given by God Almighty to mankind. It's a verbatim word of God. All the other world scriptures, including the Bible, they are what you call third party narratives, meaning to say there's not just what it's not just claiming to be the words of God. There are a whole, whole host of different people who are narrating the Bible, each giving their theological slant. Precisely. And the reason why that's the case, because it claims to be uh, the verbatim, meaning the express word of God, without any third party narrative. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's interesting. I haven't changed, you know. Whereas the Bible, I feel like it's more and more has changed over the years, where it's not like from the from the opinion. Yes, yes. So that's right, it's quite correct. This is what the Quran states as well. The Quran states that the, the, these scriptures, they were changed. Um, the verses were taken out of their context. Some things were added in, other things were deleted. You, I mean, uh, I'm not sure how much you're aware of that. So this is quite a, uh, quite a regular thing. So as Muslims, we invite people to understand that in our lives, one day we're all going to die. That's a given fact. And we don't really think about these things in our society, but it's more driven towards the consum consumerism and living for the moment. Yeah. But that's a, real, that's a brutal reality that this is going to be a fact. So we must all make preparation for that hereafter and to acknowledge our crater. You've got two nice eyes. If I offered you 50 million pounds for both of your eyes and you got blind for the rest of your life, would you accept the 50 million? No chance. You would say no chance because it's going to serve you no purpose. God has given it to us free of charge. The air that we breathe. Did you know the air that we breathe is 78% nitrogen? If there's a quarter percent less, we wouldn't be able to... Uh, Pardon? Oh yes, there are so many. So why we invite people to accepting Islam and many people are becoming Muslims from all different ethnicities, walks of life and it's like an incredible phenomenon taking place. It's the fastest um, growing religion. Yeah. But the reason for that, like even now you're stopping, you're busy, you've got two suitcases and you're, you've got things to do. But it's not eloquence on my part that is compelling you to listen. But the Arabic word is called fitra, which means Allah, God, has put a natural inclination in your heart to know of Him. This is very fundamentally important, you see. So it appeals. So as you're, as you're listening, and, it, and what I'm saying may resonate, but this is just what is it, the natural inclination within you, which is compelling you to listen. So these are very, very important points to observe. And hence, we invite people to accept Islam. You've got a copy of the Quran. It's the most um, dignified, well-maintained, meticulous book you can possibly imagine because it because it says it actually challenges it says in the Allah who is the Arabic word for God which is the did you know Jesus spoke a language called Aramaic no. it's Ara, not Arabic Aramaic it's like a dialect. dialects are quite similar Hebrew Arabic Aramaic they are referred to as sister languages Semitic languages they share same cognates cognate as like root words so they all go back to like um, like in Arabic, the word for prophet is Nabi. In Hebrew, it's Nabi. So there are many, many similarities like that. So uh, what we then say is that the final revelation is in, revealed in the Quran. God expects you to live a life according to God's will. So where God has said, you can't do this, you can't do that, we resist from it. Then what God then says, you must enact, we submit our will. So the five, the five fundamental prayers are, are the, 
um, are the relentless theme that we we worship God, which God is due that worship. You see, so this is what we invite you to, invite you to, and that natural inclination which is compelling you, that will bring you with an open and a subjective heart, that will bring you towards Islam. There's going to be no other option because it, conceptually of God it makes the most sense. It never makes man God or never so. Whereas all the other world religions, they somehow take away the understanding that there is only one God and giving that God sole glory and make the major protagonists in some conjunction to be that deity. So for example, Jesus in the New Testament, he didn't claim to be God, yet people still later worshipped him. Yeah. Same thing in like other religions, like Hinduism. Their major protagonists, Ram, Krishna, Vishnu, they didn't say we're God, yet the, th the third party narrators within their text implied this and hence they became deities. You see what I mean? Whereas Allah, God, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, nothing can resemble God. So in the Quran, there's a beautiful chapter towards the end, Surah 112, where God says, Say, He is Allah the One, the self sufficient, the eternally besought of all, meaning everybody needs Him. He begetteth not, neither is He begotten, and there is nothing like unto Him. That's a beautiful definition of God, you see. Shahada. Yeah, you know what I would suggest to you here? Listen to me carefully. If you believe today that there is only one God who is unlike his creation, God is not a man, not a woman, not an idol, not a statue. God sends messengers, of which you are familiar with. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them. Messengers sent by God to bring people back to worshipping God. If you believe that, that already makes you a Muslim. The rest of the stuff of... Yes, oh yes. It's, it's so beautiful and so simple. The Shahada simply involves you testifying there's only one God and the Prophet Muhammad is his final messenger and servant. Just like the messengers which preceded him, Abraham, Moses, Jesus. They were just messengers sent by God to their communities. Is, is that, do you believe that? Yeah, I do. I thought um, I have to like, change my whole lifestyle to like, Yeah. So what I would advise you on that, it's not much of a change. For example, alcohol. Do you drink alcohol? A little bit. Fine. Do you think you can? I mean, is it, is it something which is a, a, a part of your life, consuming alcohol? No. It's not. So if you were to set it aside, would it affect you too much? No. It wouldn't. Okay. Number one. So that's one of the major changes. Number two, carry on what you're doing. Do what you do. What you normally do. Are you involved in a relationship with someone? Okay. So in terms of relationships, which is ubiquitous to all world faiths and all customs is in the holy sanctimony of marriage. If we go around in our societies um, becoming promiscuous, but you know where that leads, doesn't it? Diseases, upset, and so many things go haywire due to the sexualization of things. So um, if you, if, if, for example, you find someone appropriate, just say a, a, a good Muslim person, and you settle down, you love him, he loves you, he takes care of you, that's the perfect utopian marriage. Okay, that's number two. So. So those are the main things, and you know, um, that's really it to be honest. Yeah. It, it may sound, oh, what type of you don't, for example, Muslim will be cover themselves. This is not a bibli this is not a um, uh, a um, alien type of concept. Even Christian, we know nuns cover themselves. Yeah, yeah. but you do that at your own pace. There's not a compulsion. And next thing you know, you become Muslim. You've got to dress up like, a, a, you know, that, you from, yes. Like comparison, but like vegan, like what they're eating means the next day or not. I just yeah. feel like it is a progressive thing. Fabulous. I feel like growing up in Ireland, women do have great profit in meat, and as I get older, I do want to be a little bit more modest. I do want to be a little bit more. Um, but maybe not to the extent of. No, that's fine. That's fine. Along, I mean, perhaps if you're not exposing your bodily parts, for example, that's fine as a starting point. So then, slow the slow inculcation. Of you know, um, you know, expressly like um, covering yourself more and more, but at your own pace. It's not an, a requirement upon you to immediately cover. No, take your time. No issue with regards to that. So the main thing is try to desist from alcohol, and um, that is really all, all I can really think of to be honest. Yeah, halal meat, for example, food. Now, do you like? I, I, I love my meat. I'm a, I'm a, like a carnivore, if you want to call it. So. Only thing about eating halal, you can still you can still have lamb, you can still have chicken, you can have all the food that you usually eat. Only no, no pork. That's the only thing. You, but did you know something? Today, because people 
like the, maybe like the taste of pork, there is something referred as halal sausages yeah, or halal. Yeah, like yes, yes, yes. Yeah, like yeah, super. So even that you won't. <laughs> if, if you want looking for the taste, you don't even have to give that up to be honest. It, but it must be halal, you see. Absolutely, absolutely. So even you can you can have non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, you may be aware of that. You can have non-alcoholic beer, yeah, whatever. Super. So look, it's very accommodating, you see, in that sense. Um, like for example, um, yeah. And then when you when you have uh, you know, uh, um, if you find someone appropriate for yourself, never get caught up in you know protect yeah situation where you may be potentially you know having physicality before uh, uh, before marriage and obviously in today's climate that can be very hard because of the nature of the things that we are as human beings yes and not just that i mean god understands our requirements in terms of our uh, you know our sexuality but that's got to be conformed within the strict um, confines of marriage you see that's very important so hence, these are some of the points that if you can, maintain, if you find that you can do that, nothing is stopping you at this point becoming Muslim. Why don't you take, become, why don't you take your shahada now? You say you want to finish the Quran, but there's nothing within the Quran which you will read, which will make you think, oh, I'm not too sure about that. I can assure you. Super. So why I would hence invite you to become Muslim now. It's a very simple process. What I can do for, are you, you say you're based in Ireland now, yes? So what we got local to here, there are organizations which actually help revert sisters become Muslim. I mean, once you become Muslim, they offer you so many advice and tips and real help. They're only based about three miles from here in Walthamstow, East London. This is Stratford. Only, so I can give you a number of a sister who runs an organization. She can very much help you. If, if, so if you're, you know, want to take, take this step, become Muslim today. Okay, civil testification. And as you, you, do you have Muslim friends? You don't Muslim friends. So what I would earnestly ask you to do is take, I'll give you the number afterwards. Take her number. She's a good sister who helps out people who are interested in Islam and those who become new Muslims. Hence, I would invite you to become Muslim now. No, you can do it right here, right now. You simply recite some. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. What you would do, you will recite, some, I will recite something in Arabic and then I will translate that to in English in which it's basically, I bear witness that there is only one God worthy of worship and I bear witness the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace is God's final messenger, preceding the messengers which came before him. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. They all came. Do you believe that? Let's become, become Muslim today. But honestly, I can offer you help. No, you can try your best. I'm still, we're all weak. You know, unlike Christianity, if we sit, make a sin and we are made weak, God has deliberately made us weak. So God realizes we will sin. So we can then ask for the mercy of God. So we don't need some bloke to come down to, uh, to the earth and die for our sins. It makes no sense. If we simply make error, we ask God, oh my Lord, forgive me. You are most forgiving. Just like when in, in, the, in the Gospels when a, a returning man um, who um, was given wealth by his father, he squandered that wealth. When he returned, he asked his father to forgive him and he forgave him. That's sufficient, you see. So become Muslim now. You want to do that? Okay, cool. So this is what you need to say after me. So I'm going to say it slowly in Arabic and then you recite it after me. Okay? So say, Ash Hadu Allah Ila Ha Il Allah Wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasul Allah. I bear witness and I testify that there is only one God worthy of worship. And I testify that the Prophet Muhammad is God's final messenger, preceding the messengers, preceding the messengers which came before him Abraham, Moses, Jesus. And with that, you are a Muslim. Honestly, it's that simple. How do you feel? Allah bless you. Allah bless you. It's quite incredible what you're doing at the moment because you know what it is? Allah bless you. You know what it is? You know this reaction you've had? So many people have this reaction. So many people. You know why? You know why you're crying? It's because it's in your heart, you see. What's come out is the truth. A recognition of your Creator. 
very powerful, you see. Very powerful. And afterwards, I'm going to give you a video that, I mean, this has been recorded on YouTube, number one. But, but don't worry, just, just relax. We can blur you out if that is what you so wish. Would you like that? You don't want to be on YouTube, no? Okay, I don't mind. You don't mind? Cool. I'm going to give you the, uh, the channels later on. You can review what we've spoken about. I'm going to give you the numbers of that particular sister. If you want to take my number as well, I, I'm not allowed to take your number. You can take my number. If you want to call me for any reason at all that you need help or advice or tips or whatever, please don't hesitate to contact me. This is what we do on a continuous basis. And the step you've taken it is so ubiquitous. I mean, so widespread. So many people are becoming Muslims that it would absolutely stagger you. You can watch our channel, relentlessly people become Muslims. It, there's a number of them, I'll tell you afterwards after I finish speaking. So just bear me for I'm just going to finish speaking on the camera. Right, you become Muslim now. So Allah bless you and I'm so, so delighted for you. And um, I'm going to give you lots of information on the table as well. Let me finish off over here. Give me five seconds. I'm just going to summarize over here. Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, this very pleasant uh, young lady from um, Ireland has become Muslim. She's taken the Shahada. May Allah bless her, may Allah guide her and make dua for her that Allah sustains her and gives her the greatest platform to continue on this path. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah Just turn them off please. Can you turn all of these off please? Sister, sister did their shahada. She became Muslim, mashallah.